action. If your current camera makes you look like you're playing in the bush league, you've got to step up your game, bro, with Red's very first vlogging camera. The future. Yeah, I tried the Red vlogging camera and it changed my life. It has face detection autofocus. Wow. And with a small HD Focus Pro 5-inch monitor, you even have a front-facing touchscreen. The red Komodo is radioactive. Unbelievable. And it just weighs two pounds. Two pounds. Never again do I have to vlog on this piece of You know, I considered vlogging on the Phantom Flex 4K because I shoot with it so much for the glam bot, but all my vlogs ended up being like four or five hours. So I pretty much exclusively vlog on the Komodo. Best vlogging camera ever. Get your own ultimate red vlogging camera today by calling 1-800-I-WANT-RED. That's 1-800-492-68733. Call now. My GoPro days are gone. I'm a red vlogger now. And if you are too busy filming to hit the gym, well, the red vlogging camera got you covered as well. Yeah, it's a great workout. I spent all my gym money on memory cards now. No way! If you are the guy who buys a spec out SUV to drive around in the city, this camera is just right for your vlogs. Finally, I'm putting my parents' money to good use. And if you order right now, you get this shiny Ooh, lens cap for just three payments of $10. Cha-ching! It's perfect for the baddest of mother just like me. Michael Knight. Okay, you may have fallen for our absolutely amazing commercial, but this is not a vlogging camera. There have been so many YouTubers who tried vlogging on a red camera before, and with the exception possibly of Jon Olsen, I think, I hope everyone else was just joking, because Red's DSMC2 cameras are absolutely overkill for vlogging because it's just heavy and cumbersome and there are much much better cameras out there for that purpose like the red komodo 6 i'm just kidding this is not a vlogging camera but what it is it's an incredibly powerful compact cinema camera that it's much much easier to travel with right philip grossman radioactive documentary filmmaker who loves hiking out to chernobyl and old soviet spaceports thanks joey first I love my RED 8K DSMC2 camera. I've lugged that thing hundreds of thousands of miles around the globe, from Fukushima to Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Baikonur, Belarus. It's enabled me to capture amazing footage in a lot of off the beaten path locations. However, this Komodo 6K, as the kids say, is a game changer for me. Its small, compact size is gonna allow me to travel to more locations with less gear. So yeah, this is Red's first cinema camera that is comparatively easy to get around, hike and travel with. And honestly, this was one of the major reasons why I got this camera, full stop. So in this video, we will explore the aspects that make the Komodo actually a great travel and documentary camera, but also explore what the clear limitations are in this context and also maybe chat about a couple of hacks on how you can overcome those shortcomings. And in the second part of this video, we will go through a couple of accessories that I use to enhance the capabilities of the Komodo while keeping the footprint small. So if you are interested in the Komodo or if you already own the Komodo, this video is absolutely dedicated to you. Also, if you enjoyed our silly commercial introduction, give this video a thumbs up for all our cameos and so that I know that we should do more of these fun random intros. And please don't call that number. No one will pick up, at, at least not in the US, and there won't be a lens cap for 30 bucks. Sorry. All right, the first thing we need to address is the size and the weight. Clearly a massive factor as you pack your backpack and decide what you're gonna take on your trip. And I have to confess, between cameras and lenses and a drone and all sorts of knickknacks, I tend to overpack. And I think I'm not going on a limb here when I say that I'm possibly not the only one. On top of this, I'm self-diagnosed with a severe form of battery anxiety and tend to carry way more juice than I ever need with me. And I think this anxiety is rooted in a couple of deeply traumatic experiences with my A7S II batteries. I guess I need to unpack this with my therapist. Anyhow, the Komodo is this slick 4x4x4 inches block 
of aluminium alloy. And if you compare it to my EVA one, it is significantly smaller. And that's true also if you compare it to other cinema cameras like the C200, C300 or the latest Sony FX9. I mean, seriously, it just fits so easily into my travel backpack. I could never do this with my EVA one. And you can also impress your friends with a shiny new block of metal. Now, when it comes to weight, the body itself weighs just two pounds. Two pounds. That's lighter than other cameras, cinema cameras that you may be considering like the Canon C70. And it's the same weight as the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K. With batteries, monitor and lenses, it's definitely not light enough to hold out at an extended arm for a longer period of time. Oh my God, this is exhausting. So I'm sorry, pro vloggers, this is a little too heavy. But as a package, it's much lighter than any of the previous RED cameras and I had no muscular problems carrying it around Chicago for hours. The power consumption of the Komodo is also very solid. I've been using the Canon BP955s and two of these batteries should give you about three hours of runtime. This is what it used to take to, to shoot about three to four hours on the RED 8K camera. This is all it takes to shoot three to four hours on the Komodo. For every eight pounds of savings I get in my pack, I can add about a gallon of water, which may not sound like a lot, but that enables me an extra day, day and a half of travel. When you're traveling across the desert in Uzbekistan, that extra day, day and a half is actually very important because we don't know where we're going and when we're gonna be back. So six batteries should get you through the day if you can get your hands on them. Apparently they are sold out everywhere and that provides a couple of headaches to new Komodo users. But there are alternatives. I will soon get the brand new Anton Bauer Titan Micro V-mount batteries, which allow me to power not only the camera, but also accessories like a monitor. And it inherently reduces the number of types of batteries I carry with me to one. So we will talk about this in a future video, a fully dedicated video about batteries. How sexy is that? Now, another thing that can limit your record time is memory. And yes, if you want to record in the beautiful and powerful Red Code RAW codec, get mentally and monetarily prepared for some heavy data files. Now, another first for a RED camera is that the Komodo has a continuous phase detection autofocus, which already came in very handy for me as a one-person operation, especially on a gimbal. Now, it is not perfect yet, and it's definitely not competing or anywhere close to Canon's dual pixel autofocus, but I'm hopeful that it will improve over time and features like face tracking and eye tracking will be implemented in future with firmware updates. This is my number one feature request. That would be so dope, especially when I'm shooting myself on a gimbal or so. Hashtag vlogger. The outstanding feature that really differentiates the Komodo from other cameras in the market also comes in very, very handy when going handheld, and that's the global shutter. Not having to deal with any of the jello warping and wobbling effect of rolling shutter makes your image just so much more pleasing. And this also comes in very handy because this camera does not have any IBIS, no in-body image stabilization. I guess you cannot have everything, right? Um, there are certain limitations, but there is an easy workaround to just shoot in 6K, crop in a little bit and use the image stabilizer of your NLE. And thanks to the global shutter, it just works like a charm. You don't even notice it. I'm, I'm blown away every time I do it. And lastly, something that you certainly need to keep in mind if you are considering using this camera as a travel or documentary camera, and this is the 28 second boot up time. There's no workaround for that except for just letting it run. And that's what I've been pretty much doing since every time I go out and shoot with it. But let's talk about gear. I've seen many photos of Komodo owners building out the camera in these very beautiful, elaborate, big rigs, and there's nothing wrong with it. It just goes to show how versatile this camera, a camera that was initially designed as a crash cam actually is. But I said it before, for me, really the value of this camera is in its compact size. So when I put in the order for the Komodo, I was on a mission to find the auxiliary gear that keeps my build as small as possible. And while it's still work in progress and ever evolving, I feel now I'm in a good spot that I can share with you my setup and hopefully you find some inspiration in it. But also please let me know what you are using and if you have any other ideas of what can be done to keep it, to more, make it more powerful and still keep it compact. Let's go.
So let's start with one of the most essential pieces that you need in order to get this camera going and that's a monitor. When I got the Komodo the only SDI monitor I had was the Shogun Inferno by Atomos and while it gives you a great image and loads of function, heck it can even record, it is freaking big. I mean just look at this combination. It also eats batteries like crazy. So I was in the market for a small SDI monitor and Small HD kindly sent me their Focus Pro LCD screen in the White Storm Trooper edition for review. And I've been trying out this monitor for the past couple of weeks, so let me share quickly my thoughts, the good and the not so good. First of all, the size, the weight and the look of this monitor are hats on perfect for my what I've been looking for. It, that's an easy but big win for me. The power consumption is also significantly more efficient than the Shogun Inferno and this is likely to a great deal because of its lower brightness. With 800 nits it's almost only half of what the Shogun Inferno can put out with its 1500 nits and frankly that was one of my concerns going into this test but honestly like I never had any issues shooting outside even in broad daylight. And the best part is I can see myself very big. What was a little bit of a challenge at times was finding focus and this is likely due to its size of 5 inch but also because of the resolution of 720p of this monitor. Of course this monitor also has all kinds of scopes and features including focus peaking which helps you in that context for sure. And this leads me to a feature of this monitor that makes it really stand out and that's camera control. Being able to control pretty much all camera functions on this touchscreen is plain and simple dope. Especially when flying the Komodo on a gimbal and having the ability to hit record and change the settings from a side mounted monitor is making the experience much smoother and faster. All you need for this is upgrade your small HD monitor to Komodo control, get this control cable and off you go. You can use your touch screen to control your camera. Just realize that one of these SDI cables is squeaky. All right, time to check in with Philip to see what his favorite piece of gear is to keep the Komodo compact and travel friendly so he can take it out to, you know, Chernobyl. People ask what my favorite accessory is for the Komodo, and I have to say it's the 8 sin cage. I've tried a couple different cages, and this one is probably one of the best built and best designed to date. It enables me to throw NATO rails on here, some RE locating pins for my monitor, it enables me to rig up and rig down very, very quickly, which is important to me, because typically with what I'm doing, capturing the image is speed is of the essence, and I need to get in and get out as quick as possible. But here's the cool thing about the Komodo, and heck, I already made a whole video about this, you can check out but with the red control app you can use your freaking phone to monitor and completely control this camera all wirelessly with minimal latency so if you want to keep your setup and camera back as small and light as possible you may get away on certain jobs with just using your phone or your tablet and using a little simple mount like this one here. I've been out shooting using exclusively the app and it is possible. Occasionally you have dropouts, especially in Wi-Fi dense areas, and they may disappear when you are out in nature. I wouldn't be able to tell. I've not left the city in over 10 months. When I'm not using the mini tripod from the RS2, I actually use the outrigger handle by RED on my right hand side and then use my left hand to focus and zoom. The outrigger handle is certainly not the cheapest option and you can find more affordable alternatives. I really found this one though versatile and easy to install because it goes right straight onto the camera and you don't need any other cage for it. And it also has a record button. To rig up and rig down your camera from like the handle or monitor, I always carry a red tool with me whenever I go out and shoot. Totally recommend getting one. And on the left side, you also see a Timmy rib by GDU. This is used to mount additional accessories while keeping a low profile. For example, like a cold shoe that I just screw in here and then I can attach for example, a microphone here. And on this note, our next guest on his favorite compact Komodo accessory. Hey, Joey. You uh, asked me what my favorite accessory is for a low profile compact setup for the Komodo is. And I think right now, shamelessly, it's this new handle from GDU. You can see it's got this little bend in it with a 15 millimeter rod support. So if you have somebody pulling focus for you and not using autofocus, uh, by the way, you guys get that this build that this Komodo is using right now with the RF support for autofocus this week. 
But anyways, if somebody else is pulling focus for you, um, it's just great to have the little rod support in there. And yeah, it just gives you this perfect center of gravity for this. I use the Sigma lenses a lot. And you know, with the batteries, it's just a perfect, perfect center of gravity. So yeah, that's it. That's my favorite little accessory. I guess you're probably the first to see this handle. Well, and now you know too. I actually recorded this entire video way before Jared sent me his video and I did not know that he would just nonchalant drop a new GDU product here. I was actually looking for a rod support system as I mostly shoot on Cine lenses these days, but most of them are bulky, require either a base plate or a top handle. And so when I saw this, I was like, Jared, okay, I'm gonna put down my order for this rod handle. But he was so kind enough to actually uh, send me a pair of them. And that moment I right away put in an order for the Tilter Nucleus Nano as well as a manual follow focus so I can really build it out and use it for, for my Cena lenses. And also, lastly, before I finish here, I actually edited this entire video here on a 2017 MacBook Pro just goes to show that you can really go out in the field, shoot, edit, export, deliver, all on the go. Let's go back to regular programming. So talking about audio, the Komodo only has one mic in microphone jack here on the side. And this may be a biggie, especially in the dark world. I've been using the Rode VideoMic Plus Pro as my go-to on-camera microphone, which works quite nicely because it can also boost the signal because the amp, you don't want to use the preamps in, in the camera. And you can still, as you can see from my setup here, you can still access the lens and hold it like this. It works no problem, like a charm. And when I need to laugh someone, I've been using the Sennheiser AVX ME2 wireless microphone laugh mic system, which is very popular and I have no problems with it. I really like it, though it may have seen its last days on my workflow because I've been trying the Trek E audio recorder by Tentacle Sync. It's this tiny, compact and light audio recorder that records, and here's the game changer, in 32-bit float, meaning you don't have to worry about gain and audio levels at all anymore, and it super, super easily synchronizes with a time code device like the Synky that you can just like Velcro here to your batteries and then plug into the external port. This is obviously just a tease. I will do a proper review of the Tentacle Sync gear next month, but let me tell you that much, I'm stoked. In fact, the audio that was recorded that I was recording myself for the commercial intro was recorded on the Track E, so more to come on that. Let's kick it over to Scott. The key to Komodo is keeping it small and fast. Put a small little lens on there, a slim handle, use the compact batteries, keep it fast and nimble, really light and quick, just like me. Well, not so light, and I'm not really as quick as I used to be. At this point, you may be wondering, hey, Joey, what lenses are you using to keep your Komodo compact on travel and, and whatnot? Well, shameless plug number 72. In my previous videos, I've been always highlighting in the left top corner what camera and lenses are being used, so that should give you an idea. But rather than talking about it today, I will be making more dedicated lens review videos. In fact, there's already one out there on the Tokina 11 to 20. Check it out up here. And while you're at it, hit and smash that subscribe button and join the notification crew by hitting that bell. And while you're down there checking if you're subscribed and have notifications turned on, also click the like button so that the YouTube algorithm and I know that you dig this video. And lastly, as always, please also comment and let us know what gear you are using on your cinema camera and what you're recommending. Always open for suggestions and your thoughts. And a big, big, big thank you to all my guests in this video. That was amazing. I really dig it. Also, let me know down in the comment section if you want more guests on this channel. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a good morning whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. Bye-bye. 498. Four, nine, Vlogging with this camera has completely changed my life. Oh, wait. That was the first one. Okay. Now I got it. Now I got it. Now I got it. With very... Red's very... Oh, we got rolling? Yeah, yeah.